There are lots of things that I love about photography and right up there is the feeling of self-belief and self-satisfaction of knowing that I can take a photograph of say a peg on a clothesline and as long as I like it then no one else's opinion matters. Unless of course you're asking for critique or presenting it in a frame for your partner for Christmas. Just keep your fingers and toes crossed and have an explanation ready. What is it? It's a peg on a clothesline. It represents hanging out together. They may or may not like it, but if it is a vision that you have and you like it, then print it, frame it, hang it, and enjoy it, and feel glad that you took the time and the effort to get your vision on paper. I also like the storytelling of photographs. All of the prints around my home have a story and a memory to them. Like this one here of the Docklands. I took this about 10 years ago. This is the digital print. It came off the wall the other day. It's, uh, it needs new glass replaced, but other than that, um, I was taking this photograph, uh, this is the Docklands across the River Thames uh, near Surrey Quays in London and it was late at night, one cold winter's night and I'd just set up uh, ready to get this long exposure waiting for the light to drop so I could get um, this photograph and this little gang of uh, teenagers come along, there was about six or seven of them and I was on my own with a couple of DSLRs, a couple of tripods and uh, they walked past and they looked at me and I thought oh they looked a bit dodgy you know so um, they walked off out of the distance and I carried on and I could see them coming back. So I got, I got my gear and went back in my car, which was around the corner. So they went, they went past and I must have done this about four or five times. And four or five times I got back in my car again and sort of not hid from them, but just got all my gear out of the way, you know, because I didn't want it getting nicked. But like I said, every picture's got a story and I can remember that night just by looking at this photograph. I managed to get a shot in though. So if you remember a while back on one of my videos, I was sitting at my computer and I saw the composition of my peace lily that had flowered and I used the sky as a background. It was just a moment of inspiration that I had. Well, it unflowered and poor old Sid went to flower heaven. So I pruned him away from his leaves and to me, it looked interesting. This once pretty looking flower had now gone all brown and shriveled and crinkled. And before anyone calls the pot plant police on me, I water Sid regularly. So I have this plan and vision in my mind to take one last photograph of Sid. So this is my plan and my vision will come later on paper in the darkroom. Here he is, this Sid, the little flower that, um, that's uh, on its way out. Well, it is always dead, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, um, and I've got this gaffer tape to a light stand, you can see it. So the stem's coming up um, and there's the flower there. And this background I made uh, myself, just, you, it's just a white piece of card, but I've rubbed some acrylic paint around it and kind of mottled it, affected in. I don't know how it's gonna look. And this is all just on an easel. And behind uh, the camera is my light source, this patio door here. Uh, and the sun is over that way. And that's bringing in some lovely window light. So if I can get away of using artificial lights um, without using them, that's great. So I'm gonna be using that window light, which is lighting the whole subject up quite nice. The only thing is, is the uh, flower is a little bit close to the background. So you know, everything's gonna kind of be a little bit evenly lit. I could pull the background further away, but it won't fit. I won't be able to get the composition where it's all gonna fit. So I'm just gonna to have to uh, wing it, but I'm sure it will be fine. Um, the only other problem with the background being this close is I wanna uh, shoot at F11 on the camera so I can get everything in focus on the, on the flower. Um, my only fear is it's gonna show up the detail on the background. I'd rather have that been a little bit more blurred. Um, but hey, I've got a couple more backgrounds to try out anyway. So um, yeah, let's get on. I'll load the film inside the camera. Start taking some photographs. Done. So this one's just for shits and giggles really. This is a um, just a red piece of card. In fact, it's not deep red, it's just a uh, lot more like a pinky red, but because this is ortho film, it should come out a lot darker than pan film, which would be probably middle gray there. So I've got a few more shots left, and this is a gray, just a normal gray card here, but I'm gonna spray it, I'm gonna spray the edges with water. Uh, I've never seen this done before, just some weird bee in my bonnet I've got. Spray it all around the edges, see if that goes dark, and we'll try and keep it a bit lighter in the middle, see what happens. I thought it might saturate in and make it go dark. Obviously, I haven't done nothing, never mind.
So these are the legs here. There's the <laughs> there's the peg. Um, looks all right actually. I'm happy with it. I might frame that one. Uh, yeah, all the different backgrounds that I chose. I wasn't too happy with the uh, painted background that I did. I did that early this morning as well. But uh, it just looked a little bit, uh, it looks a bit, little bit Mickey Mouse, a little bit homemade. It just looked like what it was. So I wasn't too happy with it. So I decided to swerve them ones. Um, but all the others have come out all right. And there is one particular um, neg that I do like. So I need to make a contact print. And that was these two negs here. Uh, that was with the, the, the weed garden sheeting uh, that you saw. Um, this was one stop, uh, one, sorry, one second exposure, and this was at two seconds. I did all the, um, I kind of bracketed the whole lot. I did one second and two seconds throughout the whole lot. Um, I've got one second here and two seconds here. I much prefer the two second one. So uh, let's make a contact sheet and I'll have a look at the contact sheet and see how it looks. So this is the contact print that I made from those negs. And, you know, just so I can see what the backgrounds look like, which one was the best one to print for me. And the background that I made with the, with the paint and the... <laughs> And the cloth, trying to brush it all in, that just looked really naff and homemade. So I totally swerved that all together. Uh, then you can see the grey backgrounds here. And we come down to the last ones. And uh, these were just the garden sheet, which was stretched out, looked really nice. And these were the rest of the images. So I was actually looking at these ones and I thought this was the best one to make a print of. So this is the one um, that I'm going to make a print of right now and see how we get on. Before I carry on, check out the new SFLAB Beginner's Guide to Film Photography and Darkroom Printing. It's a complete beginner's guide from buying your first camera and developing film at home all the way to making your first darkroom print. Packed with lots of information, illustrations and exclusive unseen step-by-step -step videos all in a simple and easy way to understand with personal email support from me along the way. Hit the link in this video's description or visit the SFLAB website for more details. So this was my first test strip that I did, and I used a contrast zero filter. I was using Rodnold to develop this in, and I quite like uh, the look of ortho film in Rodnold one part to 50. So, you know, it works for me, I quite like it, um, but it, it does pull out a little bit of punch. So I've used a contrast zero filter just to tame the contrast, and this is my first test strip. So I've got uh, two seconds, four, six, eight, 10, and 12, and going along, I decided that 10 looked probably the best uh, for me making a print. And I've put it long ways because uh, I can't fit it this way around. But there you can see there, that's the test print, uh, a full test print at contrast zero with 10 seconds. I was really pleased with the tones. So I then wanted to know what I was going to be doing around the edges. Is the edges too light? Are the edges too dark? So I placed another test strip and just did the edges. And this is the third test strip that I've done. You can see some scribbles that I've put on there. That's not marks on the neck. That's just some scribbling. Um, I did 10 seconds of contrast zero. But then for another 30 seconds, I just use my dodge tool, and I'll show you in a moment under the enlarger, uh, to vignette the edges of the print. And I just felt it looked a lot better uh, with the uh, um, vignetted edges. So you're kind of being drawn into the, uh, to Sid, you know? And I felt that looked, I felt, just felt it looked a lot better using the burn tool. And you can see it's a little bit darker around here as it fades in towards the middle. And there it is there, that's the first print that I made using those test strips. I've got this little tiny, tiny, tiny mark, which uh, I've just looked on the negative and got that out of the way. Uh, but you can see the effect that the vignetting has done. It's just drawn your, your eyes to the middle of the print. And I'm really happy with the overall contrast. And I knew that um, as soon as I looked at this, this brown looking crumpled leaf, it had a lot of bags of tone inside. I could see it and I knew it would look good in black and white. Um, so there you go, that's pretty much the final print. And for this, I used my garden screening background, you know, the stuff to stop the weeds coming through. I used that, and in fact, you can also see the mesh very slightly uh, on the print, which I think adds to it. So you can see all the detail inside the leaf. And when I was doing the focusing on the Mamiya, this was the area that I was trying to get in focus on the ground glass on the, on the Mamiya. Um, I didn't want this little tiny knobbly thing to be too sharp. So I focused in on this area and it worked out. That's just slightly, very slightly out of focus, which is what I like. Um, again, it just brings your whole eye into the leaf rather than on this part here. So uh, it's all come together quite nicely. And before I make the print, check this out. Look at this, I've got a big boy's easel. This was kindly donated to the channel uh, by Ian Hamilton Cummings, uh, Lord Ian Hamilton Cummings. And uh, he knows that I've been using my cardboard templates for, for a few years now. And he said, look, mate, he went, I've got an easel if you want one. I said, yeah, lovely. So uh, I bit his arm off for it and it's coming the door. So um, Ian, thanks very much, mate. If you're watching, this is uh, going to be handy. Like I've said in the past, 
with my easels I've always used cardboard templates because I know that these are quite expensive and there's lots of other things in the dark room uh, like paper and chemicals and stuff that you're always spending your money on um, but those cardboard templates have always served me well and I probably will still use those uh, for certain sizes or different things that I want to do in the future but um, for now this is fantastic. This is going to go on eBay, guys. If anyone's interested in this uh, print that I'm making, I'm going to put this out for auction after the video on eBay. Um, so if you want to help support the channel, I'll put the link in the description. Then goes the paper. This is Ilford's multi grade developer, and I'm using Ilford's multi grade deluxe Pell resin paper. And it's uh, 12 inch by 9.5. I've been using that paper quite a bit recently. I'm normally a Kentmere guy. I usually um, use this stuff, Kentmere. Slightly cheaper. It takes uh, a little bit longer, I've noticed, for the prints to come through, but that's neither here nor there. I like them both. I'd say the Kentmere was a little bit less contrasty than, the, than this Ilford, which produces some nice blacks. As you can see, it coming through now. It's a really nice print, I love this. Such a simple idea, you know? Nothing too complicated. I haven't gone over top with test strips and dodging and burning and have you. It's just all seemed to work. And I don't think you can beat window light for this sort of photography. You know, you can throw as much artificial light in as you want. I don't think you can beat good old fashioned window light. I suppose that's what they uh, used in the days before they had all these artificial lights, you know, just nice natural window light. Still works today. Coffee everywhere. Oh. oh, do you know what? I've never spilled a drink in here before, I always put my coffee there, but you know, you learn the hard way. Lucky it didn't ruin nothing. It just smells a little bit. Oh, it kept me awake. So I've had a great day shooting film and I've had a fantastic time in the darkroom and made a few nice prints. So uh, like I said at the start, you know, if you believe in your own photography and you, you, you want to go and shoot that thing or shoot this or shoot that, don't let anyone sit there and say to you, oh, I shouldn't be doing that or shouldn't be doing this or this ain't no good or that's no good, unless you're asking for critique. As long as you enjoy your own photography and you enjoy your own prints, that's all that matters at the end of the day. Like I was taking Sid, dead Sid, <laughs> to, to, to take a photograph of. I wasn't too sure how it was going to come out. And, you know, some people won't like it. Some people will. It's just how it is. But uh, I like it, and that's the most important thing. So there is Sid there, never to be photographed again, guys. Like I said, I'm going to be putting this one on eBay. I'm also going to put the uh, include the original negative that I used to make this print. And a pressed, uh, a pressed <laughs> what do you call it? I'm also going to give you Sid as well. So there's this, the Neg and Sid as well. If you want to uh, jump on the eBay and have an auction for that, I'll put the link in the description. I've made another print for myself, which is hanging up over there to dry. That's the one with the dust spot. So thanks for watching. If you did watch till the end, I hope you enjoyed the program. And don't forget, I've got my SFLAB Beginners Guide online now for you to download. There's a bunch of information on there and also some exclusive videos as well. And I've got to say thanks to the guys that support me on Patreon, the YouTube members, and also you guys as well that comment and help me in a darkroom as much as I'm helping other people uh, and take interest in the work that I'm doing. So I uh, really appreciate it guys. Have a great weekend. I'll catch you next time. I'm going to have a beer. I'll watch the football. <laughs>